Hey everybody, it's podcast time. Welcome to Disc Only. Welcome one and all to the Disc Only podcast, the podcast that asks all the hard-hitting questions like, why? I'm Proton John. I'm Tom Fox, and how? Oh, oh shoot. Uh, I'm Steven George, and where? And I'm the Epic Drummer, and what? Oh, good one. You also could have went with when. And who? You had a lot of options, despite being picked yeah, last. Yeah, there, there was, there were, yeah, two. Don't put this pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> I would, it took me a minute to come up with mine, so I, I'm glad that I always go after Tom. I was I was ready. <laughs> Unless somebody said what before me, then I would have been completely screwed. Goes after Tom. See, the panic in his voice made me think he had forgotten he goes after you, or he'd only just realized no, no. it right <laughs> after. John has <laughs> taken one entire calendar year, but it is ingrained into my skull. Yeah, this, is part, this is episode twelve. I'm just I'm, worried that someday there's gonna be a group of us out like in line at the cafeteria and I'm going to have to like move everyone out of the way and be like, no, 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 no. I, I have to go after Tom. Like this is the only way. <laughs> like let, always make me go last. And I'm just fine with that. I'm going like, to cut me, people me. at the Piccadilly because I have <laughs> to go after Tom. Me and John have it super easy though. Cause like he starts it, I end it, but then there's just the weird mix up between you and I, Tom, yeah. I don't know so. why the middle is so, is so squishy. So, so yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> It's it's a disc only Oreo, <laughs> double stuff. <though. laughs> Thanks. Ah, uh, good. We're the I've we're the good part. I would, the you know, I was gonna say it, it was it was like uh it, it's like uh somebody who puts on a hard exterior but is emotionally squishy. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, I feel like we know a lot of those. Like you know, like an Oreo, <laughs> like me and Tom. Yeah, hard exterior, but we uh, have the cream. I think I think I could have worded that somewhat better, but I, I think people. I think you could have done sentiment. that a lot better. Okay. Well, you I'm, got not, the cream. I'm not. I'm not always power. good with the words, John. But I, th it's the heart. It's the heart that counts, and I have the heart. Do they sell Oreos with just a cookie? Like no cream? Like I mean, whatsoever? that's that's just the cookie. Just... That's like the light versions of the cookies. Yeah, but those yeah, don't cream it. The, the, or no, the I think you can actually cream? just get the wafers. I think that is actually a thing you can get. Oh, so, okay, huh. so this actually, I actually researched this a while back. Uh, they, if you've ever been to a, an ice cream place that sells, like, Oreo yeah. ice cream sandwiches, those, just like the, the or just the cookie part of those, so they're, they're really, really big Oreos. They sell those. You can buy those. Ooh. I found a, uh, a, on Amazon, the first thing I searched when I looked up Oreo without cream uh, was Oreo uh, on Amazon Oreo wafers, twenty three point one pound box. Oh heck yeah! So uh, if you're willing to spend one hundred three dollars and ninety seven yeah, cents, make, not make your tax own. and shipping, then you could just th then you could just get the the Oreo without the cream. <laughs> Crowdsourcing are they the, Oreo. <laughs> the normal Oreo like the cookie size ones? Or are they for the ice cream? Or, I mean, the ice cream seen... still has some of the the icing in it, though. Is there a description for this? Does Apparently, it? Because I, I know sure. that they sell they sell broken Oreos as a yeah, like crumbled topic. Oreos. Yeah, 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 like yeah they yeah. sell the crumbles just like with um, uh, Reese's cups as well. Which I didn't know that I didn't know they sold the Reese's cups uh, that you can actually <laughs> just buy them. I had no clue. <laughs> the The top review on this uh, is titled "Why I bought these for my." <laughs> I bought That's the question I ask. <laughs> there we go. That's the question that was asked to me. I'm covered podcast. for the day. <laughs> I bought why? these for myself and I live alone. I don't know why I ordered these, but I regret nothing. He's going to be I, rolling out of his house later. It's just a good snack when you have guests. Just <laughs> offer them an Oreo, but with no cream. <laughs> <laughs> I like I cream like, without cream. <laughs> I found the listing that Tom was reading, but I like how I also searched for Oreo without icing, <clears throat> and all I got were cupcakes full of Oreo icing. So, yeah, so thank you, thank you, Google. <laughs> that's the opposite not exactly. of what you want. Google exactly is good. Google is good until it's not. 
I mean, we're all just out here doing our best, and Google is is included in that. Oh, Tom, you kind of left out one part about this. It's literally just a giant like shipping box. Oh yeah, I I I wasn't sure if that was. I guess that wasn't really obvious, but yeah, it's it's just a, it it looks like. So you know how the Oreos are are laid out. I got in, I got it on packaging? screen for everyone. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> well, this is for the this is for the audio listeners. You know how like Oreos are laid out like in the packaging. It's that, but in a giant cardboard box, and it's just one layer of those cookies. And it looks like they're in a, they're packaged in a garbage bag. Uh, that's, that's like the packaging food bag they use like for cereal and stuff like that. I like uh, okay. the fact that they're actually um, separated. Like they have like the serrated packaging, so they don't like crumble up against each other. That's actually really cool. Well, a lot of the reviews on here said that they came broken. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm just imagining a situation where you order this and like it makes it from from the warehouse like all the way to your door but then the person just drops it at your door and they just all yeah. break instantly. that is like that, yeah. you know what that's like that's like when you go to the convenience store and you want to get a heath bar and you go through all of them and they're all broken in half because those things are brittle yep i mean that that wouldn't be the oreo company's fault that would have been <laughs> like fedex like yeah. legit it's like oh hey fragile i don't think so enjoy your freaking cookie powder <laughs> enjoy your crumbs <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I mean, you wouldn't you wouldn't throw them away, but you would be disappointed because yeah. it would have to become a new product. Yeah, you'd have to like eat them with a spoon at that point. Like it would be like a like a cookie. Oh, I don't even know what it'd be. Just like a frick. I was gonna say like cookie soup, but it that would that would take a liquid. So no. <laughs> I'm sure if you heated them up enough, they they melt into oh liquid. God, they probably all the oh, well. Here's the thing: before that, like they'd probably go through some kind of chemical reaction where the ingredients just kind of split apart, and then it would turn to soup. And then at that point, it would just be like carbon soup. Use those suckers as a freaking like control rod in a nuclear reactor. Like, yeah. <laughs> also, doesn't it seem a little odd that the the Oreo company is is or with Nabisco? Nabisco is so willing. To like let you just make your own fake Oreos, <clears throat> but they do like, that themselves it... though. Like all the weird alternate versions of Oreos they've been coming out with lately. Yeah, but at least that is an Oreo. Like that's something you buy at the store that you know, you know, it's fairly trusted. I mean, you know, your your crazy neighbor could buy some Oreos, Oreo <laughs> wafers, and then make his own with you know toothpaste and hair gel, and then sell them out of the back of a truck. <laughs> he would probably be asked for a refund. I'm going to be honest. Or arrested, like the guy who was giving, <laughs> like the like the guy who was giving homeless people Oreos filled with toothpaste. Ew. I'm First of all, ew. Secondly, ew. Oh, what a terrible yeah. thing to do. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like ew from a that would taste gross perspective, and ew from a horrible human being perspective. Yeah, double ew. Double stuffed is, ew. <laughs> Sorry. Double stuffed so, ew. <laughs> like John said, there's so many types of Oreos that you could create anything. Like you could make like a jalapeno Oreo, and if you if you gave that to me. And it's got the little Oreo stamp on the wafer, which it would. I'd just be like, I guess this is a thing I can buy at the Walmart. Like, I would not, I would just believe you. So, well, it's like, they also have, a, oh, God, what was it? Um, I'm thinking of, like, the off-brand Oreos as well, like like the Newman's Own, like, cream cookies. Hmm. Huh. Uh, like I know those, the, the classic ones from, like, 100 years ago, literally 100 years ago, where, like, one half is... Like a light cookie and one half is a dark cookie. You know what I'm also, talking about? Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah those. actually. Also, I don't know if John has gotten to it on the art bit yet, but somebody posted a picture of like one of those like spubby edits <coughs> where um, it's a, it's like a McDonald's cheeseburger Oreo. Yeah, I skipped showing that one because I was like, eh. <laughs> That's so funny, though. Excuse me. No, like, McDonald's cheeseburger Matt Oreo. I, this is very <laughs> fake, but yeah. <laughs> But the God, thing no. is, it could be real. Like Oreo has really they've 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 done all sorts of crazy stuff. If you uh, so like you you're you're talking about like in terms of like fake products being real, head on over to there's a subreddit called R Spubby. Oh yeah. The, uh, the 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 word Spubby came from the fact that like there was this post a long time ago where it was a bunch of a bunch of images of uh, fast food logos but they were all spelled wrong and subway was spubby and there was also like like burger krieg and like Mc, mcduggles or whatever like that yeah so it was like spubby e freef yes e -freef, dude. yep e -freef. i remember that so so our our spubby 
uh, is like people just editing products in that regard, or like not even products. Like they'll do like they'll do products, they'll do movies, they'll do like just like memes in general. I love Taco Baco, Tinkle Outside the Bankle. That's <laughs> yeah, that's classic. <laughs> Um, it, it my, is hard to hear those words without laughing. <laughs> my my favorite one though is uh, Dr Pepper. They call it de pepe pepe pe. <laughs> That one's just really good to me. Like that's what I can- canonically call Dr Pepper now. I'm just like, hey, give me some de pepe pepe. <laughs> whoa, 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 okay, so I found it. There's there's Bumgerkirk. Have it in a way. Yeah, dude, Bumgerkirk. Uh, uh, these we, these were shown to me like four years ago by one of my we, mods. Oh my god, Wheaties old fashioned Hergus Burgess. Wheaties. Man, oh god, my favorite like it's not my favorite like like fake product, but it's my favorite slogan. McNaldo's. I like the it. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I do. I do like the it though. I do like the uh, it. And then there's also uh, instead of A and W, it's A and A, and the tagline is just ah. <laughs> that that's your restaurant. That's oh, our yeah, restaurant. Was- that's the Quagsire <laughs> restaurant. Quagsire eats. Uh, old fashioned Hergus Burgess though from Wheaties is really good. Yep. And then there's uh, uh D- Duncan Dunce, America run on Dun Dun. Oh no, no America uh, uh, American <laughs> run no Dun Dun. Yep, Dun 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 it's. Dun dun dun! It's man. I oh love it. Like, uh, like uh, one of my favorite things in general is pronouncing words wrong on purpose because they sound funny. So this is like my comedy in in a nutshell. Like I love this. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I told you about how I how I did that when I was in high school, and I I kind of screwed up for life, right? Yeah, because I you missed, uh, you, I, <laughs> because I you pronounced missed... it sausage, <laughs> and it as, followed as you, sausage. and now now you permanently pronounce it as sausage. Yeah, like I, I can, I can force myself to say it correctly, but I knew I because it was always a joke with me and my friends. They're like, "I'm gonna have some sausage. I'm gonna have this," and then I ordered a sausage egg and cheese biscuit from like a Bojangles one day, and the lady was like, "A what?" <laughs> and then it was like that inner horror of like, "I've become what I have have humored for so long." <laughs> yeah, like the glass shed. You became a Chicagoan. It oh, was, um, it was Holy not sausage. ideal. So you got. You gotta be careful. It was like in college, uh, me and me and uh, my roommate Alex would call each other "bro" as a joke, and then we actually started doing it. It stopped being a joke. We had done it for so long. We were we actually started calling each other "bro," and when we realized that, we were like, "What have we become? What have we done?" It's, it's like it, whenever okay. there is there there is like uh, such an interesting like layering system to your like pronunciation of things <laughs> from sausage being a joke that you just adopted into your lexicon to draft and garage yeah i mean you can blame my parents for that that that's just <laughs> that's just all like hereditary at least i did i didn't i don't say warsh i don't say warsh. at least i i i've got that under control that's do you, that's do you just say, my parents okay question for everybody do you say both or both do you add an l both Oh, those uh, you said the same word twice. Can you try that again? <laughs> both, both, and both. Oh, I do not add an L. No way. Both. Yeah, like I don't. Boat. I use an F. I, both. Like both. a like a boat with a with a lisp. A uh, both. <laughs> like both like both. people don't. A lot of people don't realize they pronounce it both until someone calls it out on them. But like I'll switch back and forth between the two, and I don't notice it. Uh, I don't think I've heard that before. That's like true horror right there. Like two things being exactly the same, but you don't notice until somebody calls it out. I mean, that's just how life works in a way. Like when I moved up to Alberta from Newfoundland, uh, people kept calling me out. And when I started doing Let's Playing, people called me out on the fact that you say Mario. Mm-hmm. Even though they say Mario in the games, just straight up. Like I, we always pronounced Mario. My whole family does it. A bunch of other Canadians I know do it. It's just a thing. I mean, that's kind of like, uh, that would also be like Canadian lexicon, though, too, the way that you say it. Like, Yeah, I know a bunch of I, Americans I that did the same thing. Uh, Slobies yeah, no, my, used my, to do Mario like, as well. My family, my family would uh, would pronounce it Mario as well because I think there was a baseball player. I don't remember what team he played for named uh, uh, Mario Lemieux, and it was pronounced Mario. Oh. Mario Lemieux is a hockey player. He's a hockey player. Okay, sorry. But yeah, no, that, that, Penguins. But, but, he was for the Penguins? Okay. For some reason... I, that's weird. My my family was all Ranger but fans. So I don't I, I'm know pretty sure he, to, like uh, mom's used to hearing his name say as said as Mario Lemieux. Like I'm I remember hearing that specifically. Really? I'm, I'm used to hearing it as Mario. That's weird. I, you, 
I had to get used to that with Erica because, like, I've I've never said Mario as Mario ever. See, but I, she says it. So there were times growing up that we said Mario, like me and my dad, but it was as a joke. It was just like, you want to play some Mario? And it's like, yeah, let's play some Mario. But we um, we happened in we had an understanding. It was Mario. But hmm. then I've met people that they do say Mario, and I'm like, I don't care if I know what you mean. I do not care how you say it. I just don't. My uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. My my New England side comes out a lot, especially when I go to the park and Manatee doesn't listen to me. <laughs> because I, what I'll because what I'll do is I'll just start yelling sarcastic comments at him from across the park in hopes that he'll listen and come to me. And it's <laughs> like and, and like at at first like like you know I at one point I caught myself doing it. And then after that, I was like, screw it. I'm going to embrace it. And I just kept doing it. See, we do like, that I, when bagels running around outside, but we do that in our neighborhood. So our neighbors are just used to us as being the weird family that just yells insults at our cat. <laughs> we'll open the door and be like, bagel, you dingus, get back here. There was a, I mean, the, oh man, Austin's, uh, Austin's slogan, by the way, is keep Austin weird. And I did, uh, I encountered no better example of that than today when I saw a dude in a leather jacket walking around with a chicken on his shoulder. Oh, is his friend? It, well, he was, but did then you... I saw the back of him, and his bit in the back of his coat was covered in chicken shit. Did the chicken have a <laughs> tiny chicken leather jacket or no? No, just the guy. That is disappointing. Because <laughs> that, because like the story's already good, but man, that that would have elevated it. I would have been like, okay, Austin's weird. Austin's Tom, really weird. Tom, look, man, that chicken can't help itself. Okay, like, oh yeah, they're, no, they're I, friends. I he just has a very very unhealthy diet. Okay. Well, I thought birds, birds don't have any like sphincter. Control, birds don't basically. really. Yeah, they don't. They don't really have like any sort of sphincter that that holds it in. Yeah, that's why that whenever they take off, they just like a rocket. <laughs> sphincter is great. <laughs> hey, thank you. I, I was wondering who was going to pick up on the fact that I said sphincter. I wasn't going to say anything. It was just like you know Mario. I didn't. I knew what you were saying, but I didn't want to call you out on this. Well, I, I I'm making up words and pronouncing them wrong because I think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> just you know don't don't become a medical doctor because if you're examining someone and you're like, there's a problem ah you're sphinct you're, you're, you're sphinct you yeah. your sphinctoid you're done for your sphinctoid it seems like you got a you, it seems like you got a hemorrhoid on your sphinctoid oh your stoe uh, is hurting you, you, you okay <laughs> you, you mean a a, a hemorrhoid yeah. a hemorrhoid god you want some yeah you, you got some hemorrhoid on your sphinctoid god <laughs> I need some uh, prep preparation H. I hate this. I, I hate I, this. I was about to say, John beat me to I was like, I hate this. I contributed and I hate this. <laughs> preparation. <laughs> I, I see someone in chat letter. saying, I do not like the word sphinctoid. Well, it's part of my lexicon now. So It sounds like a Futurama character. <laughs> that's what it reminds uh, th me of. That, that's okay. I could describe exactly what character that is. That is Hedonism's bot slave robot pal, sphinctoid. <laughs> Dude, oh my god, I was hanging out with Erica the other day and I randomly went, woo, like that. But I can't remember I can't remember why I did it, but then it just it brought that episode of Bender becoming human back to me. And I and she'd never seen it. So I basically I spent 10 minutes explaining the episode, and now we just go, woo, 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 back and forth. That's I so love awesome. oh my god, that's such a good episode. Woo. I like grilled cheese. <laughs> pulls one out from under his folds oh man God. so gross he's dead what do you mean he just went woo about 10 minutes ago <laughs> hey, you know he just said hey he died when the party uh, six hours ago when the party began but he just went woo no that was air escaping from the folds of his fat <laughs> woo, woo. <laughs> my favorite part about taking 10 minutes to explain a 20 minute TV show to someone is that you could have just shown them half of the TV I show. know, but we were in a you know, restaurant. You know, what the, you know what the worst part about it is? Okay, so that, that makes sense. But you know the worst part about it is? that ep That's uh, part of like a, lex uh, like a three part lexicon. So that episode is seven minutes long. I know, I'm so dumb. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. You've a watched part it. compilation, Omnibus, there we go. You can't unwatch it. Tales, Tales of, interest. of interest. God, I love Futurama so much growing up, man. It's a really, it's a really good, uh, it's a really good show, man. <laughs> Woo! So yeah, if I if I do that any, I'm sorry ahead of time, but I can't help myself. It's become part of my lexicon. 
Yep. <laughs> the word lexicon has come up a lot during this. I I, I use I use it a lot, but uh, I'm I'm glad that other people are using it too, so I don't sound nearly as pretentious. Yeah, lexicon's coming up in uh, January. Get it? Because <laughs> it's a convention. Ah, I'm sorry. <laughs> you lost me. Sorry. <laughs> I, know I laugh. There are conventions. Do you ask what, what, what is a convention? I don't remember anymore. <laughs> You're saying. <clears throat> uh. I've I've I haven't really been to that many. Like I'm aware of the existence of some, but I've only ever been to like PAX and then like a, a few little tiny ones. And There's then I a... know that like Magfest exists. <laughs> and then Yay. like anime convention. I don't know if that's the name. I'm so happy hey, with I my mean, name. Like, it, it, I mean like I mean like you you probably <laughs> just named an anime. anime. You probably. Convention. I was gonna say you probably just named an anime convention by saying anime convention. It's anime con. <laughs> uh, anime con. To, to to think, uh, you know, thirteen to fifteen years ago was like was the 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 age of people getting severely injured at anime conventions because the yaoi paddle was a thing. Anime con in the Netherlands is a yearly Dutch anime convention. Well done, Steve. You're yeah. welcome. Yeah, wow. That's that's <clears throat> that's the one I was referring to too, so that's good. Got that the, one right. The is yaoi a, paddle. To, to those of you too young to remember, it was just, was literally what it sounds like. It was either like a cricket paddle or an oar that had the word yaoi on it, and people would hit each other in the butt with it. Oh, don't I'd remind do me because that just reminds me of glomping, and it always reminds me when I used to cosplay. Oh yeah, yeah. What the time, what what is that? What, glomping? Tackle, it, it's yeah. a tackle hug. Yeah, it is oh, literally God. a running tackle hug. Oh, no, frick uh, that, dude. That's dangerous. I, I've like told this to story before. People. So I used to cosplay uh, back when I was in university, and I used to cosplay as Dante from Devil May Cry. And uh, I had this, like, huge pleather jacket. Like, it was heavy, so you could sneak a note on me, and I wouldn't notice. And that is exactly what someone did when we were playing an anime chess. So I'm we're just standing next to a bunch of people, and someone snuck a glomp me sign on my back. So, of course, a random girl did just that, but uh, tackled me from behind, so I didn't see her coming or here. I just got tackled. I landed on a small child, and uh, all I know is, like, when I got back up, I just see her running off in the distance and a bunch of uh, the staffers chasing her. So that's the last oh thing I remember. So, like, was, I, oh, she, yeah. she was She was six foot eight and 240 pounds of pure muscle. <laughs> Gonna wow. say a no on that one. <laughs> it's it sounds like it's it's the concept of a mosh pit but one person <laughs> yes <laughs> or attacking yeah. somebody friendly like i guess uh -huh. not like that's the thing with me at conventions come up and say hi and shake my hand please don't don't touch me unless i give consent like <laughs> no, oh, no glomping glomping is banned in most cons now because they realize oh wait this is fucking dangerous yeah yep. let's open up this glomp oh no. my god it's just uh, that's like that one bit from uh from Space Ghost. <laughs> Don't touch me! <laughs> Dad, I got an email right. just for that, man. Frick yeah! <laughs> yeah Anybody I, got I, the eight bit I, mask in the chat right now? Heck yeah, dude! Is that what that is? That what that is? Yeah. Yeah. I've Don't touch me. That term glomping. That's new for me. No, yeah, glomping, yaoi paddle. Those are all ancient anime. Like, things. Like, yeah, mid mid to, mid to late two thousands uh, anime com like etiquette as it were i also found out ever... there is actually okay. or there was actually an anime con in the states called anime con held in san jose california in 1991 it was the fourth anime convention created in the united states and eventually became anime expo wow oh, cool. okay. which is one of the biggest or it is the largest actually in north america it's probably the biggest anime convention yeah well yeah. i mean what's the first <laughs> what's see, the first see one? now that's what i'm trying to figure out now that this is the rabbit hole i've gone down I'm well. I'm super curious. So when you find out, please inform. Well, the, fir the first one in the world looks to be Comic Cat, which makes sense. Yeah, back in 1975. That mm. Oh, that's a that is way back. Uh, yeah, Anime Con, which was held in San Jose, California, in 1991, is known for being the first convention to break the thousand attendance mark. Oh, cool. Uh, it is also claimed that Yamato Con, a convention devoted to Japanese animation, was first held in 1983 in Dallas, Texas. Wow. Uh, so they were watching, like, like uh, 
like Astro Boy and Urusei Yatsura. Yeah. Project Akon Gundam. first started in 1990, is considered to be the first anime convention in the country, but this is disputed with Yamato Con, apparently. Has uh, has anybody been to Dragon Con? Because I don't, I don't know anything no, about it. No, because it keeps happening during PAX West. Ah, fair enough. Yeah, I have, a, I have a friend who has went to Dragon Con every year for like 10 years. Yeah, and it same. Was, at the beginning, it was always like, do you want to go to PAX West? He's like, I can't. It's, at, it's Dragon Con. I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, my, my main my main three are uh, Momo, Mag, and uh, TwitchCon. I don't really go to that many other ones. I do want to hit up Too Many Games one year. Yes. Um, if you want to buy video games, year, Too Many but... Games is fantastic. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm thinking about that one. Um, I think they actually they sent me an email saying, if you wanted to come, let us know. And I said, yeah, but then COVID happened, so... Um, Maybe later on. I know I'm hitting up Momo and Magfest though. Whenever that happens, I am so excited. Magfest, I think Magfest like coming back is gonna be is oh. gonna be nuts in terms of trying to get tickets in hotels because it's been yeah. nuts for the past like like five years now, and everyone's just getting over COVID to go back to Magfest. So <laughs> exactly, oh, every everyone wants to do every single thing mm -hmm. all at once. Because I, I, I live in a tourist town, and whoo, ha, whoo, it oh, is yeah. nuts. I, I live in a military town where a lot of tourists come in because it's a historic, and it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> uh, once, once like, May hit, you can't, you can't go anywhere. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of crazy. I live, in, I live in a town where uh, weed's not legal in the state, but that doesn't stop most of the population. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, Myrtle Beach. Um, our busiest weekend is July 4th, which at the time of this recording was recent. And uh, we were seeing like July crowds in June. And I was thinking, oh, my God. Oh, boy. <laughs> what What is going to happen when we get to July? Uh, and it's crazy. It's crazy. I think there are numbers I've just never seen before. It's There's just a lot of people. How many like fireworks did you see, Stephen? Like I stayed on home. Uh, I mean, well, I know <laughs> did that. You, but, did you hear like, that from your house? You, yeah, oh, yeah, I bet you they're could everywhere. Hear on. Yeah. Well, yeah, because you know, and and Jared knows this. The the fireworks are legal in South Carolina, yeah. So people can put. The, you're not supposed to do them on the beach. People do them on the beach, um, but even from you know residential areas, like it, they're everywhere. And the thing is, people got started. I don't know how it was where you were, Jared. People got started here. At like two in the afternoon, which is nonsense because it's not dark enough to see the stupid things. No, and it they wasn't went that from bad. Two until eleven, so Ooh. like it was like nine hours of fireworks, nine hours of explosions. This is Manatee's first Fourth of July, and I'm happy to say that, like, aside from him being like, "What was that bang?" Initially, he's like, nah, "I don't really care," which also is also probably a little bit worrying because if I get shot with a gun, I don't think he's gonna care. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, it just depends on if he hears the shot. And you'll you'll say something. You'll say, "Excuse me, manatee, I have been shot. I need you to call an ambulance." And he'll I say, mean, "Oh, you're right." That's the translated version. The 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 uh, literal version would be <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> just just the uppercase A. <laughs> yeah. Ah. There's a there's a con here that's actually happening in like three weeks called a uh, Classic Game Fest. It's just a small. It's it's fairly small. It's run by one of the local video game shops here, and uh, they've got like it's pretty much like it's pretty much like a, like a much smaller too many games. Yeah. Oh man, I dude. Whenever I get the chance uh, in the next coming years, I definitely want to go over to Gamescom in Germany. Like, I think that that would be super fun. I've never actually been out of the states. Well, I've been to Mexico, but um, nowhere near over there. And like, me and Erica would just take like a two week long thing go to that convention go to another convention and then hit up like around in ireland and scotland like travel around and actually like see the countryside and stuff man oh i'm looking so forward to that that was gonna happen last year too um but you know but yeah I i'm very excited for that I, I, canada I first used, though i used to want to like travel to like all these different places and i still do but now i want people to come here so they can meet my dog <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you That's picked a fair. brave time to adopt a dog. What do you mean? 
Well, like in the middle of a pandemic, but like it's also oh, yeah. beginning to wind down and you may have to start traveling again. That's true. But he's getting old enough to where I'll be able to leave him at a place where I know he'll be like, he won't be like kept in a cage the entire time. Because yeah. once he gets, because he's getting to the age where he's going to get his nuts snipped off. Um, so, uh, so once he gets that done, I can leave him at, uh, at PetSmart and then they've got like a whole like, like take care of me thing where it's like oh we're out in this like this room where there's like other dogs and we're just playing around for like four hours all right time to have food now we're yeah it's it like like pet smart does that but only if only if he's neutered so i gotta i gotta wait i gotta wait until he's uh until i give him the cone of shame i mean i hear him rattling around yeah the the most ideal time to have gotten a new pet would have been (laughs) <laughs> like the beginning March of the pandemic. April 2020. The problem yeah. is no one no one knew at the time that it was going right. to go as long as it did. Yeah, we all we all got Animal Crossing instead. <laughs> yeah, we all got the animals. It was fine. <laughs> yeah, just ten of them living in a village or uh, island rather. Yeah, not exactly the same thing, but we, we didn't know. Dude, okay, so I know the answer to this question already, but have y'all seen Adri and uh, Jules's new popper? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. uh, Marnie. Yeah, Marnie yeah. is absolutely adorable dude i'm so happy for them i know this is like a random thing but man that dog is adorable as frick don't listen manatee i know it's It's so little tiny jules was um on breakfast stream this morning and said that marnie weighs three pounds yep Dude, I was like, that cat is five weighs... Keplers. That's a, my that, cat weighs I mean, more than that. <laughs> five would equal one kepler five yeah. keplers would be... <laughs> yeah that's one, a lot of keplers one, uh, <laughs> one one fifth it's one fifth of Kepler, but yeah, no, that's a, a Pomeranian man. Like Pomeranians, Chihuahuas, they're really light dogs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's just so physically tiny, like yep. just the little tiny eyes and little tiny toes and little tiny everything. Just see the uh, when he did the uh, the dog song. On, oh my uh, god! On uh, from from Undertale, yes. he's, yeah, he's got Marty in like the little pouch as he's playing the guitar. What the. F- <laughs> I mean, like, I'm just thinking about okay, I, Tom. When you when you take when you take Manti out to go to the bathroom, that dog's kind of big. That dog probably make big poo. Marnie's poo. How big could Marnie's poo be? It it's gotta besides... be the tiniest little poo. <laughs> just still gotta. He's still gotta. Still gotta pick it up though, so the people don't get mad. I mean, at some point, you and your the the dog's poo is so tiny, you could probably just tell the dog to go in a litter box or something you could teach the dog have a little pad i think they are pad training yeah i'm pretty sure they are what they probably they probably I, should have so, been at least yeah so i had uh i, I was uh bringing manatee to uh to pet smart for uh for puppy training just so he learned some basic commands and hopefully listen to me one day um and as as we're walking up they have like this this display of like all these like pee pads stacked up and the way they work is that they're like they're pheromone scented, so it's like the dog will smell and say like, "Oh, I'm supposed to pee here." Well, Manatee walks right up to it, sniffs, and goes, "Oh, I'm supposed to pee here," and starts peeing on this like stack of pee pads. <laughs> <laughs> He's smarter than he needs to be. I mean, uh, that is a good product, and they clearly work. <laughs> they probably should have stacked it in a place where dogs couldn't reach it to pee on it. I mean, yeah, <laughs> but that—that's you know. <laughs> that just, you that just, just shouted at the employees this product works well as you gather your dog and leave <laughs> five stars I haven't bought it yet but I, I have a sample <laughs> <laughs> Manatee, Manatee did really good in his uh, in his puppy training um, I, I got a video of him Like it's, it's one of those things where it's like at the end for like people with like their social media and the people who treat their their pets like their uh, their their children, where they have like these little like mortarboard hats that you got to put on them and take pictures with them. So I've got video of manatee attempting to to shake his off. So hmm. and yeah, and I wore the actually wore the big puppy energy shirt to his uh, to his to his quote unquote graduation. But uh, but he did well. He knows how to sit. He knows how to lie down. He knows how to stay. He knows how to come. Uh, he knows how to. Uh, if I tell him to leave something, he'll leave it. He's good on a leash, and uh, for the last day, we're teaching him how to uh, we're teaching him how to roll over. So he, so now he kind of knows how to roll over. That's good. That's good. Yeah, good, and I mean, like having, young. yeah, and also just having basic commands down on a dog is so good because I've been yeah. around dogs and the 
the the owners never trained them and like it's so immediately clear like oh yeah like the different like different people that have trained the dog at least a little bit and those who haven't and the dogs that don't they're like i want to jump on you and i'm like you are you know you are huge you can't you do that it's like i'm gonna do it anyway most of the dogs that i had weren't trained very well but they also didn't like people outside the family very much so mm. it was mostly a matter of like it, so that wasn't really that much of an issue usually when we had company over we'd have to like we'd have to lock them in the the bedroom until they like settled down then we could bring them downstairs and like introduce them uh the only one that we really had any sort of like concerns about was the biggest dog that we had which was a sputnik he was a he was a mix he was this big big uh black fluffy dog and uh he liked to jump up on people, but he was also, like, he was loyal to a fault. So, like, uh, so he would, like, we didn't even have to train him to come and call. Like, we would just say his name and he'd be like, oh, I need to be over there now. But he was, uh, but he was, uh, he, he was a good dog and, and, uh, he liked to, well, he's still, he, I mean, I, I say he was a good dog. I just haven't seen him in a while. He's still alive. Um, but, uh, but he, he, he jumps on command, but he usually doesn't jump up on people. Hmm. My, my, uh, my uncle always loved, like, from the time I was little, he always loved Rottweilers. And he just always had multiple Rottweilers. And I remember very vividly one time going to visit him, and uh, he had put all of the Rottweilers, I think he had three Rottweilers, fully-sized adult Rottweilers, like, each over 100 pounds. And they were in Ooh. the bedroom. And we come in, and my mom is, is kind of afraid of dogs, especially big dogs, because she just doesn't want them to jump up on her. And, you know, her brother was like, now you just sit here. And she's like, please do not bring the dogs out. He's like, no, I'm not going to bring the dogs out. And I'm thinking he is absolutely going to bring the dogs out. <laughs> and the dog, and, and like he calls the dogs and the dogs are behind the door and they start like barking and like trying to tear down the door. <laughs> and then my, my uncle goes and like opens the door and all the dogs come out and then they want to like oh, all jump no. up on them up. That was kind of the person he was. <laughs> he liked to do that sort of thing. My mom was horrified. Jesus. They're nice dogs, though. They're friendly. It's just uh, they're large and uh, three at once is a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All the all the Sharpays I owned were uh, were they were. So here's the thing: the first Sharpay we ever got, it was an uh, she was an over the hill uh, breeding pup. <clears throat> so uh, so like she uh, so she had like had puppies. Um, and it was like, she can't, you know, and the, the, the owner was like, well, she can't have puppies anymore. So like, she's just going to kind of live out her days here. I don't know if she's going to be as happy with me. So I want somebody else to adopt her. So we got her, we get her and she despises us. Like you try to get near her, she'll growl. And like, you know, she would, she would try to avoid everybody at every cost. What we didn't know was that a family friend of the person who sold us the dog would watch after her, watch after, like, watch after her as, like, the watch after the dog when she was away, and abuse her! Oh, frick. Oh. So she was only loyal to this one woman. She was also overweight, which is, uh, which is unfortunate. Uh, but, like, you know, I think she had, I think she had a really good life with us because we, we were much better owners, but, uh, but I was, like, 10 at the time, so she didn't, she, so she never warmed up to me. Um... And but she have, she warmed up to my my dad real fast because he was working from home. Uh, she warmed up to my mom next, and then my siblings, and then I was like a rambunctious kid who was like, "Oh my god, a dog! Let's play!" And the dog was like, "I am having none of this." Uh, but then we got a puppy. Uh, while while she was still, her name was Jenny. Um, we got a, a puppy that we ended up calling Pork Chop because we thought that the breed kind of looked like pigs. It's part of the reason why I named Manatee Manatee because he looks like a, a manatee. Um, but, uh, <laughs> But from the moment we got uh, pork chop, uh, Jenny was just very, very like loving, very motherly, and like raised her well. So pork chop loved everybody in the family, but because of her upbringing with Jenny, she hated everybody else. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got Bear, and it was pretty much the same thing, but a little bit looser. And then we got Sputnik, who was a big idiot um, and loved everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then, but, but and that and that ended up working in our favor because Bear had, uh, eventually calmed down. Um, and like started like warming up to to strangers more. Yeah, it's so oh, overall it was a, it was a, we had a good run of dogs. My family. It can hmm. it can be really difficult if you if you have a dog that needs I mean basically complete 
rehabilitation. Yeah. But it's not impossible. Yeah. Um, some, some good friends of ours, uh, Alex and Haley, um, they adopted a dog several years ago. Uh, uh, Leica? Th- Leica, yeah. And Leica was a, a puppy mill dog. Um, she was just used to make puppies, and she was clearly abused and, like, super scared. And, uh, mm. I mean, it, it took a lot of work, but they were – she's like a normal dog now. When they got her, she was skin and bones, and she was scared of everything, and she would just – you know, she'd pee on the floor in, in horror at every little thing. And, like, she's a completely rehabilitated dog, but it took a ton of work. But it is possible, so, you know, it's – you know, all, all animals deserve a chance. It's just – yeah. It, it can it can take a lot of effort on yeah. uh, on part of the owners and See, you know you know like i i don't mean to take from the sincerity of all this but we never would have gotten what's the what's the name of that picture with uh with uh with thomas and Leica where, where they use the content aware scaling oh <laughs> is that square dog <laughs> i have no idea but yes i know what you're talking about i did a i did a tweet with that picture at some point uh, with the Daytona yeah! soundtrack. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking I about the edit- that that I was would... talking about the edited one with the with yeah, the with the, the content aware about. scaling, yeah. Hmm. Animals are great. I, I think uh, big I, animal house. What what is it that Haley says I like that video except that you broke my dog's neck? <laughs> <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> we we all, we all have to do what we can. To make things animated, sometimes you detach the heads of different individuals. <laughs> it's fine. By, by the way, for those who are wondering, he didn't actually break the neck of a dog. He he took a static image of the dog and flapped its head up and down to make it look like it was talking. But it, it could also look like that the dog's neck is breaking. Yeah, thanks for clarifying. <laughs> just wanted, digital, just wanted, a digital just, animation. Just wanted to be sure. Like, yeah, like Steven likes cats only. Dogs, he breaks their neck. Oh my god. <laughs> I've always um so my both of my parents love animals. My dad adores animals. He was a he was a farm kid, he grew up on the farm, he always took care of all the animals. And I've just never seen anyone like as compassionate towards animals and then also have animals drawn to them as, as much as him. And I just really took after that. And I I for the longest time as a kid I wanted to be a veterinarian just because I loved animals so much. But they yeah. were always a part of our our lives but we always had cats growing up my uh my dad is a massive animal lover um he used to have like five six dogs and they were all wonderful uh three toy fox terriers we had a bulldog two bulldogs english bulldogs and um a lab and now we have a scottish terrier or they have a, a scottish terrier named uh gracie but my my dad they only have one dog now because you know all the other ones got older and passed away but my dad now feeds the woodland creatures out at the house. So he has like a full back, like on the back porch of the house um, on the side, he has a camera set up and he has like all this like different, like he puts like nuts and uh, just everything that, you know, woodland creatures would like. So he gets like raccoons, bunny rabbits, uh, squirrels. He has like a family of squirrels that are living on the roof. They have like a little thing up there it's just it's the most adorable thing and i always find it really funny because as as i've said before on the podcast my dad's like a big bodybuilding intimidating mother fricker but he's just like oh look there's a bunny rabbit oh you know he's like he wants to like <laughs> feed him like like he's a oh my god it's just it's the most precious thing in the world i was and, gonna say i think your dad might be a disney princess uh dude yo 100 percent, like absolutely they need to make a movie about my dad call it duff that's it. <laughs> I was gonna say, is your father that dude who had like the thirty raccoons on him, and he was just giving him hot dogs? Was that him? God, man! If it, if he if he could, he would. Legit, he loves the woodland creatures out in the area. Like uh, every the... time I every time I go over and stream, like I'll see like three or four bunny rabbits just be chilling outside, Aww. and and I find that like I love rabbits. Y'all know that, and I just I'm so I'm always so happy. It, like just puts a smile on my face. Speaking, speaking speaking of a Disney princess in uh <laughs> one of the uh the uh expanded subclasses in D&D for the ranger is called the swarm keeper uh mm-hmm. where 
part of uh, part of your connection to the environment is that you get a swarm of something. Now, it could be plenty of things. It could be a swarm of insects. You could be a killer beekeeper. Or you can get fluttering birds and literally be a Disney princess. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and just like, but one of the abilities is terrifying if you use the uh, the the birds, because it's called swarming dis dispersal. And what happens is you basically go into the swarm and then you disappear and you reappear somewhere else in the swarm. <laughs> oh dang, that's actually I mean, that's, metal. That's kind of neat. I like. But, like uh, but uh, but imagine that with like a flock of like sparrows or bluebirds. That'd be a or big flock. Old flock. Like, like, <laughs> but I'm just thinking, like it's to it's like it's like innocuous, like it's completely innocuous, like the these like the, well, it probably wouldn't be innocuous if there were like like a hundred of these things. But it seems like these innocuous, cute little birds, and suddenly someone phases into them and disappears and comes out somewhere else. That is a person you don't want to frick with. Yeah, the swamp <laughs> keeper. I think I would do ants. <laughs> Fire I, ants. I would do. I would I, do fire ant ants. And how, I would ant kill, how I would kill my my enemies is I would just hug them, and then the ants would. Ta you get bit by enough ants at once, you, mm, you're done. Oh yeah, you, you'll go into anaphylactic shock. Anaphylactic shock. Ah. See, anytime I hear the word ants, I just can't think of I, anything else but that stupid Ant Man commercial. Well, oh, the one where it's like they're like they're like clapping their knees and whatnot. Ant Man. Yeah. Ants. Ants. Ant-Man. <laughs> when I hear ants, I think of my yard. <laughs> and the fact that there are ants. Well, not anymore, but there were ants in it. Is it? Was it Paul Rudd that kept showing yes. clips from an E.T. knockoff on yes. Conan? Yeah. Oh, Mac and, he did it, and he did it on yeah. Conan's final episode, too. Yes! Amazing. There's like a ten well, minute and, like and that, reel of him doing it over the years to Conan. It's hilarious. And, and it was and it's across multiple <laughs> multiple like shows that Conan has had. <laughs> like it guess? started Not in me. like the late nineties, early two thousands. I've never watched Mac and Me because I feel like I don't need to. I like how you I knew what curious. movie it was. <laughs> yeah, it's there's a huge scene that is a tie in to McDonald's where Mac and me, me being the other no, it's the you. kid, I it's guess. No, it's you. It's you. Me. Where I, I was actually in that film. I knew uh, it. Where we all ate at McDonald's. So I just want to I, I, I want to clarify something, because there's probably people who haven't seen it. The clip is like this kid in a, in a wheelchair whose like, <laughs> brakes don't work, and he ends up falling like down. He ends up like rolling down like this hill very far and goes off a cliff. <laughs> Yeah, it was, um... It's they did Mac and Me on MST3K? Did? I don't remember. That must be okay. more recent. Oh, here we go. There's, yeah, there's a newer MST3K episode on it, so it must be like it must be like oh. uh, one of the Netflix ones. Yeah, it's then. the reboot. Some, the, Derek's is reboot. Okay. Uh, so I would be willing to watch it that way. Because I don't know that I want to... I have an issue with wasting my time on movies. Like, I really only want to watch good movies, but I'm willing to watch you know, uh, an MST3K or something on something, if it's comedy and it's providing other forms of entertainment to me, then I'm like, okay, I can, that's fine. If, if any of y'all want to get into MST3K, the first episode I recommend is Samson versus the, the Vampire Women. Hell yeah, my favorite episode. It is so good, and there's like, y you have to, like, one thing you have to know, to those of you who have seen it, do not spoil what's in it. Yeah, no, the 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 twist is the best part about that movie. I also liked uh, like Mono's. My first episode was Mono's Hands of Fate, but people Same. told me that's not a good one. Not a first one. To, uh, not a good first one to go it, in on. It is a hard one to go in on. That was my first episode as well. Was San, was uh, sorry, uh, Mono's the Hands of Fate. But like, if you get through that one and love it, then you're you're in the series at that point. Yep. Monos, the hands of fate. There's a lot of dead air in the, in Monos' hands of fate because, like, there's literally nothing happening in that movie. What was that? There was one recently that came out where it was like, it, it was. I'm trying to think. It was the first new season when they did the Netflix reboot, uh, 
where there were there were two movies and I think they both took place in like like a medieval sort of like King Arthur time and like the the commentary on the movie was 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 fine. I couldn't get through it because the movie the both movies were really bad. Hmm. I uh, I didn't grow up watching Mr. Science either. Um Mal did. Mal's seen a bunch of them, and then uh, another buddy of ours, Chaz, he's seen, I think, all of them. Um, but I've always enjoyed what I've watched, and I've seen an ever-increasing amount over the years. They're always really good. And uh, what's the... Sp uh, riff Tracks. Riff Tracks. Yeah, riff is Tracks is good. <laughs> Sorry, that's an accurate representation. <laughs> is that from... Uh, it's an image of, like, a Viking playing with two unicorn dolls, and the, the caption is, POV, you're Jared's dad, duff. Is that from uh? I think it's either Tangled or How to Train Your Dragon. I, I was gonna, I couldn't remember oh, the name. Tangled of the movie. chances. Oh, it probably was from Tangled. Oh yeah, yeah, because it's from the, the it's from the bar scene. He's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. That is an accurate representation. Sorry, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I just had to comment on that. Whatever movie had the Tom Servo Academy Choir was also really good. Just because I love that song, I use that song for vocal warm ups. Which okay, one? Man. Whichever one had the Tom Ser the the Tom Servo Academy Choir. You know, here's to the guys and gals who like to fly. I don't remember which movie it was. It was it it was, it was something that had to do with like it was basically like a top uh, Top Gun ripoff. Oh shoot! I think I know what one that is, but I can't remember the name. Starfighters. Chats just said. I, Star I don't remember uh, uh, if Star it is Chancers. Starfighters and. I have no idea. I, I see a lot of people saying Starfighter, so it's probably Starfighters. When in doubt, ask the chat, man. They know freaking everything. Trust me. I'll, I'll like, I'll make a comment to something that's like, "Yo, what is the song that goes doot doot doot?" From like two <laughs> years ago, and somebody will say the exact song I'm thinking about. And I'm like, "How the frick do you know this?" Like, it's it's actually kind of incredible to me. They're like they a new have, age Google. <laughs> they have that feature now on on phones where you can just kind of like hum things, and it ain't never done it. <laughs> There's been times I'm like, I need you to figure this out, and the robot's like, I don't know what you're doing, man. Is where, is this where a song? Or you say, Hey, insert robot here. Uh, what's the what's the <laughs> song that goes be boo boo bop boo boo bop? <laughs> Mr. Krabs comes over the yeah. loudspeaker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I bucko it. Let me let me rephrase my statement. Chat either knows exactly what I'm looking for or will troll the frick out of me until I figure it out myself. It, it's it's either fifty fifty. I was gonna say I've had decent luck with Shazam and even like Alexa. Uh, I I'm like, hey, play with the Sinbad? song with this lyric, and uh, it usually gets it right. I've actually, oh man, I miss Shazam. Like I used to, I used to use that all the time, and then like same here, Sinbad's best work. I just like <laughs> shut up. <laughs> uh, like I just, I've never really used it ever since. Like a couple years back, I don't know. Does it still exist? Yeah, really, dude. It had it's a like, game it, show a couple years back. I think really? it's, uh, I think it's integrated into a lot of uh, a lot of personal assistants now. Yeah. I would think that that would be the case, but yeah, like I, I remember whenever that app first came out, it blew my, my myself and my mom's mind because uh, me and her would always use it like with the stuff on the radio because we wouldn't know like what it was. Like my my mom is probably the biggest music buff I've ever seen. Oh, okay, and... so Shazam still exists and still has that game show I was talking about. It's called Beat Shazam. Uh, it's hosted ah. by Jamie Fox. Huh. Okay. Shazam. Yeah, I, I bet you it's on Game Show Network. No, Fox. Shazam is is, oh. is integrated into a bunch of stuff now because uh, very recently, because I'm always watching all the Apple events, one of the changes in uh, the new iOS is that they're allowing Shazam into the API so you can actually access it oh, as a third-party developer. Have. So it's it's a thing. Cool. It's, it's everywhere. Hmm. Yeah, that's just that's something from my past that I didn't know came into my present. So <laughs> that's kind of cool. I'll have to download that again. Isn't yeah, Shazam I think a it's... superhero? I mean, it's also that. 
it used to be Captain Marvel, and then Marvel was like, no, no, no. <laughs> not, None of that not now. Nope. Not anymore. Because we would have had a Captain Marvel, Marvel from DC and a Captain Marvel from Marvel. Now we just need a Captain DC. Y'all ever heard of uh, Amalgam Comics? No. It sounds it familiar. Was, it was DC and Marvel's crossover where ah. a lot of, like, the stuff, like, where basically they would, like, more or less fuse characters into one. Um, Wolverine is Batman. Uh, yeah. Bruce Wayne is basically, I'm trying to think of what, oh my god, who is he? Um, uh, yeah, Bruce Wayne uh, runs the Avengers, so he's basically Nick Fury. Hmm. Um, Captain America is injected with Krypton, uh, with Kryptonian DNA. And it's like, there's like, there's a lot of like weird stuff that comes out of that. That's kind of cool. I, I, I don't think I've ever actually read it. Have, oh God. Have y'all, have y'all heard of Dark Knight Metal? Is that the, is that the one with the Joker who laughs? The Batman who laughs, dude. The Batman who laughs, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, that is brutal. A, that is a crazy series, dude. <laughs> like that has been probably one of the most exciting comic book events that I've seen in a long time. Like uh, I haven't read through all of them. Like I, I've gotten a lot of synopsis from videos and stuff because I, I I watch like what what culture and things like yep. that. I, but, I watch those too, <laughs> dude. Oh my god, dude! The Batman who laughs is so intense. It's so cool. Is is is, is the Batman who laughs? Uh, is that is its origin a spoiler? Would you say? Ah. Ah, I have no idea, but I don't, I, I don't really want to just yeah. I don't really yeah, because I want to explain it, but I also don't want to like spoiler it yeah. or spoil it rather. It, it's basically like the craziest Batman you'll ever come across, man. It's so cool. And now there's a uh, a new comic coming out called Dark Knight Death Metal, and it's just like oh, continuing on the story, and I can't wait, dude. I, I'll, I'll I'll say this much about it. Basically, like in in the DC multiverse. There's like there's like a negative multiverse where pretty much like it's basically Murphy's law brought to fruition. Anything that can go wrong will go will, wrong, and that's yeah. where the Batman who laughs comes from. Yeah, there, there are spoilers all over the place, but we don't want to do that here. Just like yeah. if if you like dark, and I mean freaking dark comics, no pun intended with it being the Dark Knight, check out Batman Who Laughs, uh, the character and different synopsis online and. Uh, Dark Knight Metal. It is so crazy. It, it is the craziest. Like, I loved Injustice, okay? Like, I loved uh, Batman basically turning into an overlord. I love that type of thing, because, like, I get so tired of the uh, the trope of, oh, the good guys win, bad guys lose, blah, blah, blah. No, whenever you frick it up and make a good guy, like an ultra-powerful good guy, turn into a bad guy, that's what I like to watch. Like, in Injustice was my jam, uh, and uh, Dark Knight Metal is even more so. So good. I also, I also think it's more interesting with Batman than say Superman because Superman Sorry, has crossed Superman. over. Mm -hmm. Superman has crossed over to the quote unquote dark side more times than than we can than we can count. Yeah. Um. In certain ways, and it's just like it's it's at this point I feel like it's it's overdone. I think it's a little bit like boring with Batman though. You got all the power of of like Batman's like basically supercomputer brain and like all of his training. But he's a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, dude. Oh, man. I, just, I don't know, man. Like, dude, I love the game Injustice and Injustice 2 as well. Like, I think that those are the most fun. Uh, well, they're, they're one of the, my favorite fighting games for sure. Um, Injustice 2 being my favorite one of the DC. But, oh, man, I just love watching those stories. Like, watching the... I'll go back and watch the cutscenes from the story. It's like it's like that one Marvel game that came out. Um the one with Modok being the bad guy. I can't remember what it's called, but it was the latest Marvel game. I didn't play the game, but I watched... Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite? Ultimate no, 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 no. I think it was Ultimate Alliance. Um, oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Or, no, no, no. It, it was it was literally the, the the Avengers. The Marvel Avengers game. Um, The one that okay. just came out. Oh, Did that one. Okay. Down, buddy? Yeah, it, it didn't get too well-reviewed. Um, yeah, but... that's because they shorn too much stuff in. Yeah, I'm hoping Guardians but, of the Galaxy is better. Me it's too. single player, so too. should be. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, even though I didn't play the games, I watched the stories, and I just, I adore those stories so much, man. Yeah, it's divisive. I can see that. 
the game might be bad, but the, 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 like, if you, if you go and watch the, um, like the animations for it, like the cutscenes and stuff, they're actually, it's actually a really fun little story. I enjoyed it. I watched the Batman movie once. Which one? Which one? The, 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 oh, the, God, no, they got me. Is it, <laughs> it, it, is it, it, was it an animated one? Was it? I watched the, the one that starts and the Joker blows up the bank. Then you watch the best one. The original? No, 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 no. Not the, not the old, old one. Not the 90s one. The Heath Ledger the, one? You're talking about Dark it? Knight. I think yeah. that's Are it. Are you talking Dark, Dark, yeah, Dark Knight? I've seen that. Sorry, I felt like I needed to contribute. And that's all I can do. <laughs> like, that's no, all I got. Steven, you should go, like, legit watch the Lego Batman movie. I think you would very much enjoy it. There's a Lego Batman movie? Yes, oh, yeah. There is. It's great. Because that's a game. It's also yeah, a really I'm good movie. I'm pretty sure that's also based. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so basically, so, so when they did the Lego movie, Batman was such a popular character and like that iteration of Batman where he's like really like full of himself and it's like a, a more or less a kid's personification of Batman being, ooh, I'm so awesome, that they made an entire movie out of it. Ah. I knew that they made a Lego movie, but that they is not two starring Batman. Yep. They, made they made two movies called the Lego Movie, one and two, and then there's like the Lego Ninjago movie, the Lego Batman movie. I didn't know there was a Ninjago movie. I knew about that TV series. I think it was. Ninjago. I didn't know there was a second Lego Movie. Yep, I only was, saw the uh, first it, one. It, Batman. It picked up where the uh, where the last one ended off, where uh, the kid's little sister is playing with the Legos now too. Freaking what? I did not know this. How did I not know this? Hold on, man. There. I often say there are there are so many video games, but the truth is there are so many movies. There are so there many. Are so many movies. Oh yeah, I don't know them. At that least, medium like, has existed for far longer than video games have. Like if you name a game that's on GameCube, I can be like, oh, that's on GameCube. I know that one <laughs> because but you it, have all of them. It, yeah, that helps. But like if you name a movie, I'm like, I don't, I don't know that that exists. There's too many movies. Ladies oh, and gentlemen, you're film major. Dude, That's it's true. called it's called the second part. Ah, oh, I freaking yeah. love that. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh man, I I had no idea. I've only seen the first one and Batman. The, ah, wow. I have not seen have any of watch. them, but I've heard they're all pretty fun. Uh, you're and a fan still... of video games. Name every video game. <laughs> Steven, hold my beer. <laughs> like, oh, you legit. got. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if it's we. Uh, Those movies were uh, directed by the Clone High guys. Thank you. That's exactly what I was about to say. I will never forget well, those Lego movies simply because of the Clone High uh, creators working on them. Yep. And, well, also, and if and I'm, also if Spider Verse. If yes, yeah, Spider Verse as well, where they have a nod to Clone High in uh, in Spider Verse as well. One of the billboards is like Clone University or Clone College or something like that. Yeah. Okay. And they're uh, they're supposedly in, getting a it, new series. If I'm not mistaken, Abraham Lincoln in the Lego movie is voiced by Abraham Lincoln from Clone High. Correct. That would be freaking hilarious. That, that is, is actually that correct. Is awesome. Okay. Wow. You know, I've actually not watched Clone High, but I need to. I've seen so many memes from it. Especially, I mean, especially I like your funny words. <laughs> yeah, I like your funny words, Magic Man. Magic Man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've seen that one everywhere. Um, but I have not watched the show yet. It's only like twelve episodes, so it's not a big commitment. Mm. Did it get is, canceled it, it, because of the Gan Did it get canceled because of the Gandhi controversy, or was there something else? Uh, that didn't help. Okay. <laughs> Fair. There, there was a, there was a lot of factors to that one, but that was one of the big ones. But like a bunch of shows that were airing on MTV at that time also didn't get continued, like undergrads. Especially if they were animated. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, Clone High kind of just got shafted multiple times, essentially. But the the Gandhi controversy did not help, mm -hmm. which makes me curious what they're gonna do with the, uh, the new series. Dude, okay, so this is a complete random thing, but did y'all see that freaking Johnny Test is getting a remake? It Johnny really doesn't Johnny need Quest? it. Johnny Quest? No, Johnny, Johnny Test. Test. Yeah, I don't know what that is. That's and like I'm a mid two point. mid to late two thousands cartoon series. Yeah, yeah. in Flash. I just, I can't believe that it's getting a remake on I'm Netflix. I'm surprised it was that popular. 
I yeah, I know. I was I was blown away by it. I was just wondering if y'all y'all heard about that because that completely blew my mind that it's getting another one. I, I can't wait for the whip cracks. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> say, or the uh, or the or the guitar riffs. The yeah, whip cracks and the guitar riffs. God, I I really I hope that they are self aware with the whole whip crack thing and they just make fun of it like for a full episode. I mean, they I were, really hope that show was pretty self aware from the little bit I saw of it. So I'm pretty sure you're not gonna have to worry about that. Yeah. Did you uh, guys ever? Did you, I, I'm probably speaking of the wrong crowd in this one, but did any of you see Fast Fast Nine? No, I have only seen the first one. Uh, yeah, I, watched, I watched the first one. So, so I had never seen a Fast and Furious movie before. Oh no! And when I saw um, Vin Diesel drive into a collapsed bridge, getting one of the hubcaps caught on a a, a, a a part of the suspension bridge, swing across a canyon, and then like land on the other side. I knew I was in for a good time. <laughs> oh, no, those movies, those movies are, are absolute B movies now, and I compl I want to watch the series, but I feel like I have to get caught up on the fucking lore. There is, uh, I'm trying to remember. There's, I can't remember the name of any of the characters in it. I don't even remember Vin Diesel, Diesel's Dom. character's name. I was Dom. Dom. Well, it, it wasn't Dom. It was a different character. Um, he basically starts like speculating on the fact that they've been on so many of these missions and none of them have any like injuries scars none of them ever gotten shot and uh and like it looks like it's about to like build up into into a b plot and then one of the guys he's discussing it who's like sounds like he's on board with it just goes you're an idiot and then they just like move on from it <laughs> dude like i need to watch it. last the last um uh, Fast and Furious thing I watched was actually Hobbs and Shaw, which I very much enjoyed. Um, but I do need to see Fast 9 just because of the memes that have come about. Like, the whole family memes. That crap is the... F that is my lifeblood right now, man. I love it, that crap. It really doesn't help the meme, though, that Dom talks about, like, about, like, really? raising his kid... And then immediately goes off on this mission. <laughs> I know. Like, it just, like, the, I mean, the story's never made hardly any sense. Like, you can't, like, you don't, you don't go to a fast movie to have a no. story. Not at all. <laughs> yeah, Not at know? all. I think my favorite scene in that entire movie, though, f first off, uh, if you plan on seeing it, know that magnets are magical. Second, um, <laughs> there is one bit in London where John Cena's character is ziplining, like, across London. Uh, and, like, there there are, like, maybe, like, five or six shots that, like, cut back and forth between there where he's just, like, ziplining across different places. And it looks like it's just one giant zipline across the entirety of London until after, like, the seventh shot, he finally lands in another building and shoots another line and starts ziplining again. Sometimes you just gotta zipline, man. Just the only I, I don't remember if I've seen the first Fast and Furious. I saw a Fast and Furious film, and the only thing I remember from the entire film is that one of the songs from MC Hammer's 2006 "Look Look Look" album was in it. I think it was "Hyphy Dumb Buck Crump," and like <laughs> I was a huge fan of that album when it came out because it's it's kind of insane. Like it's. MC Hammer did his thing like a long time ago and then releases this album in 2006 and everyone's like I'm sorry what? And I didn't know I I didn't know I needed I needed to hear Steven reading that song title yeah. but that was incredible. <laughs> That's something you need now. Dude, it's listen, I I am actually far more familiar with every song on that album than I'd ever care to admit. Anyway, I, I that dumb song was what crump is that what it's called? Hyphy dumb buck crump. It's hyphy just hyphy where we from? It's a great song. I highly recommend it. Anyway, it's used unironically in one of the Fast and Furious films, and it stuck out to me in a big way. And I was like, oh my god, this is this is from MC Hammer's 2006 album. And everyone's like, shut up, we're watching the movie. <laughs> uh, it's really great. Uh, I mean, uh, whenever it comes down to those Fast movies, like, they're just dumb fun for me. Like, okay. if I if I want to go watch like just a crazy summer blockbuster, I will just go and do that. And they're a they're a mindless '80s action movie for a two that for a, uh, a, 20, a 2020 audience. Yeah, one hundred percent. 
But uh, uh, truthfully, I like Hobbs and Shaw better than any of the Fast and Furious movies, period. Well, because that was just Drift. The Rock and Jason Statham, which is already a pretty damn good pairing. I know, dude. Like, yo, just put those two in a room and, like, videotape them and you'll have a movie. Like, that's it. Just let them make fun of each other for two and a half hours. And I will pay. <laughs> I will pay freaking Disney Plus uh, premiere access to watch that on my TV the day it comes out. Because that... That's- it's a good time. I mean, if you want to replace, uh, what, what was the Rock and who else? Jason, Jason Statham. Statham. If you want to replace Jason Statham with uh, with uh, Kevin Hart, then then you've probably seen the, them t- those two fight a lot. Yeah, yeah. How many movies have those two been in together? <laughs> two Dude, Jumanjis. Uh, yeah. Was that one where the Rock's an FBI agent? Oh, dang it. The Rock was the Tooth Fairy in a movie, wasn't he? Yes. And I think it was just called the Tooth the Vin, Fairy. Vin Diesel yep. was the Pacifier. Or was like it was like a spin-off. I can't remember. It was yeah, very yeah. similar. Oh my god, I saw Tooth Fairy in theaters. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Why? you just triggered you just triggered it was for a film class. We were I think I did to too, watch- actually. <laughs> We were told to watch something bad. We were like, go out of your way to watch something bad. And I dragged all of my uh, roommates and friends at college to go see the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> Except I think Alex didn't go. Alex was like, I refuse to waste $12 and Alex didn't go. But everyone else Alex went and watched the Tooth Fairy. was the smart one. <laughs> yeah. I think he just met us at the Dairy Queen after. When did that movie <laughs> come out? When did that movie come out? I remember... Uh... I remember when uh, I remember when Scott Pilgrim vs. the World first came out in theaters. A bunch of my friends that I from college went to. Uh, <laughs> There's the second one. Went to. Uh, there was a second Tooth Fairy movie. Yeah. We'll get into that as soon as I'm done with the, this story. The toothening. Uh, we we went to go see it, and on the way back, uh, my group got s- separated from uh, from like the rest of the group because I think like we made a wrong turn or something like that. And we hit every single red light on the way back. Every single red light and some and there was one red light where we were waiting for a good two minutes and there were no cars anywhere and the driver finally gets like frustrated enough and just shouts, what are we waiting for? (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, the second tooth fairy, somebody in the chat. Oh my God. Please tell me somebody else sees that. What? The Tooth Fairy word spelled two T H. Oh, T W O T H. God dang. That's just. <laughs> Man, see, this is what I was talking about earlier. Like, watching a movie like this, like it's it's too painful, and my I feel like my time is too valuable. So like, I can only watch it if it's going to be. <laughs> a part of like riff tracks or something because there has to be some other value added otherwise i'm just gonna scream i i, I think you need to watch like a movie that's bad but bad on purpose but knows it's bad like watch the velocipaster that was a hilarious movie to watch and it was really short well, hold hold that the just phone. sounds awesome, actually hold the phone. what was that title again the velocipaster so it's about a pastor who can turn into a velociraptor uh and fights crime I believe it's the, oh shit, what's the actual tagline? The Long Claw of the Cloth or something like that. Wow. Oh. It's, it's on, I believe, Amazon Prime. Uh, it's really good. It's really good. A Man of the Claw, that's the tagline. And the, you know what? Okay. Oh, here we go. I, I have the feed up. My bad. Uh, well, here, let me, let me just do you a solid then and just uh, show you the poster. Oh, it's kind of, it's man. It's kind of amazing. It's kind of amazing. A man, a of, man the claw. of the claw. Dang. There's ninjas! There's oh, ninjas yeah. oh, yeah, he fights ninjas. Oh, I love it. I mean, wow. you know. When it... If you want to see, here, here's yeah. what he turns into. That's that's the that's the actual dinosaur transformation. It's so <laughs> good. It, it, wow. It's so is good. This an, is oh, this an like, asylum movie? No. It's like back in Notre Dame. I like see that. Budget went into the graphic design of the poster. <laughs> <laughs> it's Which really is, good. Honestly, it's such a funny movie. I enjoyed it a lot. Does it's, it's okay? Call. Question: <laughs> Does he believe in himself? No. 
He has is that to, part of the movie? A little bit. He has a he has a that build he up confidence. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not in that way. Like the creationism versus versus dinosaurs thing. Oh no! Well, he was a pastor that gets cursed and turned into a uh, velociraptor because he was wandering China, I think. I, and I, I want you to know that at this point, you can say literally anything. <laughs> you can make anything up, and it would still be true. That's the best part about the movie. That it's pretty much the same. Like, I there's not much I can say that will not top this movie. You need to watch. You this know movie. what? The best movies start off with a title that's a portmanteau of something. Like Velocipaster. I you know what? I so earlier in the year, um Mal for a while, Mal and I were watching movies on Sundays. So every Sunday we would swap who got to pick, you know, the 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 film. And right at the beginning of the year, maybe it was at the very end of last year, Mal wanted to watch a Hallmark movie. She wanted to watch something that was like it's okay, so it's highly rated, I think, on Netflix. It's called The Princess Switch. And I was like, man, I just know I'm not going to like this. But the rules are, Mal gets to pick the movie, we get to watch the movie, I get to pick the movie, we watch the movie. So I sat down and watched this movie, and woo, woo. It wasn't even that it was fine, it was just everything about it was cookie cutter, and you could tell what was going to happen from the beginning of the film, and I kept asking how much was left. So every 20 minutes, I had to pause it and be like, I got to get another drink. <laughs> and then I would sit back down and I would pull up the thing that showed how much was left. And it felt like the movie lasted forever. Oh, man. So, you know, I'm not anxious. I'm not anxious to watch mediocre movies. I liked The Room. The Room is good. Then watch the Velocipaster. Is... You will love Velocipaster then. Well, those would be slightly different because the room is bad and doesn't know it's bad. Yeah. Velociraptor is bad and knows it's bad. So those are different experiences. Apparently, its budget was thirty-five thousand, according to somebody in chat. That's like Sharknado. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. Kite, Kite has a description of the movie. After losing his parents, a priest travels to China where he inherits a mysterious ability that allows him to turn into a dinosaur. At first, horrified by this new power, a hooker convinces him to use it to fight crime and ninjas. Freaking that, awesome! That is the plot of the movie. That is a sweet setup for a movie. They're actually working on a sequel. Heck yes, dude. That's what I'm talking about. Like, I like it whenever like a movie, even even if it doesn't like you know, it's not like a crazy success. They're just like, yo, let's freaking make another one because why not? You know, it's so good. Have y'all seen the uh, the uh, footage from like the behind behind the scenes of a Godzilla movie and like the person inside the uh, I can't remember which monster it was. It looked like it looked like a like a stegosaurus with a triceratops head, and uh, it's you just hear like the person inside the suit going, "Gah!" Gah! <laughs> and like doing the roars like for the suit. I don't think I've seen that. No, sounds awesome. Yeah, it's Baragon. It, it's 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 adorable. It's really cute. God, movies movies cost so much to make. So hearing that the movie was done for thirty thousand is like that's such an incredibly small amount of money for for like an actual movie, like a feature length movie. Like to make a to make a ninety minute anything, it's so it's so expensive. Or yeah. for free if it's for college credit. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, free wait free for who? Because things things still cost things still cost money. Well, I remember. Well, well de depend your your budget is uh is a lot. Um, you you're uh, you don't have nearly as much budget for a student film. That's for sure. God, we had students whenever I was in college. You know, for the, some of the other film students, for your senior project, you can you can do whatever you want to do. Like if you if you are an editor and you want to be an editor, that's fine. Um, if you want to do you want you want to be a PA, then you're a PA. Whatever. But one of the options is instead of doing that for each quarter, you could use all three quarters to produce your own short. And there were there were film students who would actually produce their own short and they would have to, you know, pay for all of the, you know, the 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 stuff and it would cost them thousands and thousands of dollars. Some of them shot on film, which is insane because film itself is extremely expensive. 
but mm. that's what they you know that's what they wanted to do and they either i guess came from affluent families or took out loans to produce the stuff they wanted to produce but i was like i ain't about that life i'm gonna edit projects and i did that and it didn't cost me anything <laughs> And it's like they're they're like they finish the movie and they go to like present it to everybody and everybody's horrified and and the uh, the kid who made it is like next stop Sundance. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean that was that was the that was the hope for a lot of people is you know make a thing and then make it good enough that you can do something with it. And no one ever did. <laughs> there, there is a certain, there is a certain uh, je ne sais quoi about student work that you don't realize when you're a student, and then you get out of school and you look back and you're like, oh, wait, everything I made was bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's fine. That's it's part of growing up and it's part of getting better at your craft, no matter what your craft is. But man, looking back on like stuff from ten years ago, you're like, oh, it's not good. Oh, okay, <laughs> got it. That explains everything. Dude. <laughs> it's fine. It's, I mean, like, I'm sure we all feel about the, that way about, about something. For me, it's Smash Fighter, the very first thing I made. Hmm. Yeah, everyone here has been on the internet for, like, a while. So you just think back to something you did a long time ago, and you're like, Oh, it's garbage! Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I hate this. That, that, that doesn't mean that there isn't some level of intrinsic value in it, but as a whole, as a whole product, it's probably not great, and that's fine. I mean, that's it's fine. it's the the whole thing of like you're always getting better, you're always growing, right? And you're uh, looking back on, you know, I mean, even in like content creation, looking back at older stuff just reminds you, like, hey, holy frick, I'm a lot better now than I used to be. So I think that's that Fuck would be you, younger me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, like that's the main thing for me with that. Yeah. But I'm not a film major, so I would not be able to. <laughs> well, <laughs> I've never it, made applies, a movie. it applies to all principles. You know, yeah. no matter what you're doing, you're always getting better. And that's the that's the exciting part is that you look back and you say, okay, thank God I've gotten better. If you made something 10 years ago and you, you hold, you know, if you made art 10 years ago and you hold it up next to something you just drew and it looks the same, I have bad news. <laughs> <laughs> very bad news it's funny because like I started doing YouTube when I was when I was 18 and now there's people who are significantly younger than me who have much more access to doing videos online and doing significantly stupider things so I can appreciate uh, what I what I started off with you yeah. can appreciate where you came from because you had yeah. it was so much harder to start at that point well, I, I can also appreciate that I'm I'm not one of those uh, kids that wants fame immediately, so they just, like, fire up uh, TikTok or Twitch or whatever and do something, like, stupid, dangerous, or illegal. Man, I or tell you what. If, if, you okay. wanna, if you really want to accelerate it, all three at once. Yep. <laughs> Fast track, I, baby. I'm really, oh, my God. I, I'm really happy that, like, um, starting off, like, it wasn't, like, instant, you know? Like, it wasn't an instant success thing. And the the slow and steady growth is so nice because you get used to it. You know, you get used to, uh, like, for example, on Twitch, you get used to talking to around 10 people. And then you can get used to talking to around 50 people at a time. Then 100 people. If you threw me into a channel, uh, like, if you threw me into a stream where I had 10,000 people watching me whenever I first started... I would not want to continue streaming, straight up. I'm like, uh, I'm I'm gonna use a a weird analogy here, but it's it's like sex. It's a marathon, not a not a not like a not a not a sprint. Fair enough. I want to. I I have so many ideas for jokes to make off of this, and I just I refuse to make any of them. I'm like, nah, <laughs> nah, too easy. All right, I think what the getting... frick is that analogy? <laughs> <laughs> Holy the best from Tom. <laughs> All right, I think I'm getting we're getting the uh, the red light. I think it's time to wrap up. Speaking of sex, this should end. <laughs> 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 oh, 
Okay, I, you I don't know how to respond to that up. one, actually. <laughs> That's why I'm just sitting here. I'm just like, I, I'm somebody, just like, somebody say something, man. Mal, do we? Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh. It's it's okay, John. They do. They have counseling every Tuesday and Thursday at eight a.m. To answer yeah. your question, John, yes, we should wrap up. Yes, thank you. All right, uh, talking points for this episode of Disc Only: uh, Squishy Sandwich, Box of Y. Double double stuffed ew. Mispronounced on purpose. Doggy's good. Swarm of ants. What that song? Superhero stuff. Fast family. <laughs> Forgive me, Dino, for I have sinned. Bad old me. Uh, what do you guys got going on this week? Uh, I have finished Star Wars Knights of the Republic as a Let's Play. So in the coming days, I'm going to be moving on to something else. Haven't decided what it is. There's one game at the top of my list that uh, a lot of people have been asking for the sequel of. So we're probably going to be doing that. Still doing Mother 3, and I'm working through various streams of um, uh, Danganronpa, Metopia, and Monster Rancher 2. And uh, every Monday at noon at uh, uh, noon Central Time at twitch.tv slash arcadum. You can watch uh, Ink and Blood, where I play my uh, Gekkoi cleric named Koki. The uh, D&D campaign. I... Okay, so I, I just released uh, the first episode of Super Mario Galaxy. Uh, Mao has never played it. We're doing co-op. Nice. Uh, and I actually... I've only played it when it... When, the day it came out. I bought it the day it came out, and I played it for a few days to beat it. I never even 100 percented it. And I haven't played it since then. So it really feels kind of new in a way. Because it's been 14 years since Galaxy came out. Um, so that just came out. And then also I've, I've been uh, slowly releasing um, some of the old timeline vlogs from 2018. And I actually just released one I think folks would be interested in. We visited Fun Spot up in New Hampshire, which is the world's largest arcade. And it's just super cool. It's it's all It doubles as a... Um, classic arcade museum they have over 600 machines there and we filmed a bunch that day and it was just super super interesting to see a bunch of arcade cabinets that you're honestly never going to see anywhere else uh and and more importantly running like they're all playable so we were playing all sorts of really really amazing things so that was uh that was really really cool and then uh this friday uh we are having uh some guests in town so i don't know exactly what we're going to stream but we're gonna have a ton of people over so it should be fun I will be doing drum streams uh, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday, 4.30 Eastern as normal. Um, but tomorrow we are going to do the first ever DDR stream um, on my channel. N not of me putting it together, but like an actual DDR stream. So uh, if y'all want to come and exercise with me, it'll be fun. That's basically it for me. That's going to be at 4.30 tomorrow as well. Nice. I am uh, on break right now, so there's no stream for me tomorrow. Friday, I'm on for our Splatoon 2 League's uh, Season 5 finale? Pretty sure it's 5 and not 4. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I'm back for that. It is 5. Okay, I'm not crazy. Uh, and then I'm probably uh, still off for a couple more days. I'm still not 100% feeling it right now. Uh, I mainly, we mainly did this today because I, we otherwise weren't going to be able to do it until the 20th. So yeah, I'm still on break. I got my second COVID shot on Saturday, uh, and, uh, I'll be back when I'm back. When Jared started off by saying I'm doing drumming, like for some reason, I thought he was just going to say, I'm doing drumming for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Slippery slope. You start drumming and then you don't stop. <laughs> don't say slippery slope because we've made a <laughs> we've made a stupid joke in my channel now for people who give subs and it's really it's funny to me. Oh god. Pretty it, pretty soon uh, you, you start you start doing that. You uh you don't want to work, you just want to bang on the drum all day, and that's just <laughs> God dang it. Dan, would you like to say a word so we can finish up? <laughs> Oh, he dang, get, he, get, dang on he gets a sentence. You get a sentence, Dan. Yeah, I get a sentence, Jared. 
I mean, Andy just used it. See you, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> See, it was that was the bait. Oh man, I just realized that we never once brought up the title of. The... <laughs> oh yeah, no, we didn't. <laughs> Oh well, next next month. Bye guys. Just, that that's a trend that there. never stops. That's a trend that never I just stops. Sat there. <laughs> it's fine. All right, special thank you to Popsky for our theme song, Prism Shard for our logo, Paper Pennies for the beautiful art in our intro, and our producer is Motion Dan. We do these once a month, the first Tuesday of every month. So the next one is going to be the third of August. By the looks of it, unless something comes up, we need to change anything. Four so weeks. Like, Mark them calendars. Yeah, because we're not doing it for you. <laughs> and that's a promise. Wait. Oh no, I, I'm not gonna do that. I was I was gonna activate people's uh people's uh devices, their their personal assistants to say remind me of disc only in a month. Bad. Bad Tom. Bad. They can do it. They'll do it willingly because they love the show. They wouldn't want to miss oh. the show. Yeah, share it with people. Did we do that? No, we haven't. We haven't done oh, that yeah, in a while. Yeah. We haven't done that in a while. Also, also rate rate it on the pl the place you do that. Um, Did you yeah. know this is actually a podcast and not just a Twitch stream? Yes. Go go to the place where you do it, and then and then p click a button and type like, "Man, this was great." You can man, type man. more if you want. That, that's yeah, <laughs> type a bit more than that too, please. <laughs> Five stars, man. This was great. Apple, Apple's just gonna see all these entries of man. This is great. Yeah, they're gonna, it's gonna be like, this is a bot. <laughs> Pull this podcast down. And on that cheery note of the podcast, clearly ending, we're gonna go. See y'all, everybody, next time. Bye. Support.